When squadron leader Barney Hartman won the title of amateur high overall skeet shooting champion of the world for 1959, he raised to five the number of world records he held. Since then, he has received many honors. His latest, Sports Afield has selected him to captain the 12-man all-star skeet team for 1960. Squadron leader Hartman, you're the first Canadian to reach such prominence in skeet shooting. Uh, what are some of the records you now hold? I first set a record in 1954 when I shot 200 out of 200 using the three guns, that is the 12 gauge, 20 and 410. In 1958, uh, I set a world record with the 20 gauge, averaging 99.5 on some 600 targets. That's the highest that's ever been shot with a 20 gauge in any one year. Uh, in 1959, just last year, I set three records, one with my two-man team partner, Cup McCreary of Ottawa, when we scored 200 out of 200 with a 12 gauge. That record uh, there are many that hold it, many teams. Uh, it can never be beaten, it can be equaled. Uh, also, uh, last year at Virginia Beach, I shot 545 out of 550 with the four guns. And uh, similarly at Detroit, uh, I shot 348 out of 350, raising by one in both cases the uh, high record. Well, you've been a competitive skeet enthusiast for nine years now. Uh, how did you get your start? If you want to go way back to uh, my home in Tisdale, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, Hungarian partridge shooting and the like. However, after I joined the service, uh, I was not able to do any duck shooting or uh, uh, skeet shooting. But I was transferred to Goose Bay in 1947, and in off-duty hours, uh, there wasn't too much recreation, so I built a skeet range, and along with the American station there, uh, started into skeet. And it was after two years that I realized that uh, I could go into it uh, competitively. I contacted uh, CIL in Halifax and had ammunition shipped in in order to compete. Therefore, by the end of the, my serving year at uh, Goose, I came out to Halifax and shot in the Halifax Bicentennial. And uh, while you might say a jet pilot on his first ride is, uh, just goes along for the ride and the aircraft does the flying, in this case, uh, I was just merely pulling the trigger and the gun was doing the work. I was very nervous. In fact, I even put shells in the gun backwards, if, if that's possible. But you did win. Well, yes, I did. It was very fortunate. Do you have any specific type of gun that you prefer? Well, I use the over and under in two of the gauges, uh, 12 and 20, and I also use inserts to take a 20-gauge shell. This uh, enables me to use the same gun, the same balance. However, I alternate between that and uh, I use two uh, Winchester pump guns uh, in the, also in the 28 and especially in the, in the 410. Could you tell us what the, the primary difference between skeet shooting and trap shooting is? The uh, skeet, we use two houses, one called high and the other low, normally called pull and mark. And the bird emerges on a fixed line of flight. In the high house, it's 10 feet above the ground and rises to a height of 15 at a center uh, point which is 21 yards equal distance from the shooting stations arranged around in a semicircle. Uh, the low house emerges from a point three and a half feet above the ground and rises to 15 feet that same crossing point. So they're always on fixed lines of flight and the shooter shoots two shots in each station and moves around until after finishing at station eight he shoots doubles at one and two, six and seven and if he's been lucky he has one shell left over his 25th and he can take that wherever he likes. However in trap you stand back, uh, there are five positions, they're, 20, they're uh, 16 yards back from the house, and the birds come out on diverging lines of flight from a center of the house, 45 degrees to either side. And in this particular uh, game, you normally break them at around 35 yards, and therefore you use a full choke, 30-inch trap gun, whereas at Skeet, you have a, a very open gun, which gives you a 30-inch pattern at the 21 yards. Skeet shooting has been gaining in popularity so rapidly that I've heard they're planning on incorporating it into the Olympics. Well, there has been a rumor, all right. Uh, the Pan American Games, uh, due to the uh, South American countries winning first and second, and I say this with tongue in cheek because I had to settle for the bronze medal, uh, they feel now that uh, skeet should be in the Olympics because they have a chance to pick up a few extra points. So uh, it, I, it would be very nice if they did because I have other ideas. I, I would go there again and I would certainly uh, handle myself a little different than what I did in the Pan American. You've been recently voted Ottawa's Athlete of the Year, which rather places you in the position of being able to give some pretty solid advice to any potential champions listening in. I would uh, say that... Uh, uh, 
Well, that, uh, that's actually difficult because uh, if you really want to go into it the way I have, and sometimes I wonder whether I should have gone as far as I have because uh, it, uh, it's rather hard in your family. You have to have an understanding wife and so forth. And uh, to really go after it, you have to understand ballistics. You have to understand your guns. You have to be able to bore them out as I do. And you have to make a complete study of patterns. Uh, you must watch the weather very closely. You have special glasses. In fact, I have six pairs of them. You use earplugs. Uh, I would also suggest you don't party the night before the shoot. In fact, I, I don't even smoke or drink. So you might say that I've missed an awful lot in order to try and uh, reach the top. Well, a dedicated enthusiast, a perfectionist, the ingredients of a champion. Squad leader Barney Hartman, world's top skeet shot. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, sir. Oh, thank you. Dedicated